Greetings from Saguaro National Park. Today, we'll be trying out the historic paved eight mile loop. Osio, that's how we say hello in Cherokee. Greetings from various iconic trails where you can run, jog, and hike. No matter what the season is, be careful of the spines and thorns and stay on a pre-planned route during the most tolerable temperatures of each season. Watch for weather changes and be aware of rattlesnakes, bees, and any animals that might pose a risk. I pursue the runner's high each time I run, jog, and hike on my favorite trails and paths, and I make these videos so that you can share these trails with me. I am Runner's High Don, an American-Canadian Cherokee, also an athlete, coach, and author. Stay tuned, and I will share my tips on enjoying life, admiring the outdoors, and finding the runner's high. We might learn a few words in Cherokee, too. Follow me on my journey, and maybe we'll learn something new together. You never know who you might run into. For now, let's run, jog, and hike trails together. OCO. Before we begin, always stretch and warm up. This is the 8.1 mile loop, shown at a hyper pace of about 5.45 per mile. It's about what I ran in high school. I'm much slower now. Always carry plenty of fluids to drink. Begin at this overlook to see points of interest near every mile marker. Steep, Galaladi. For safety, be careful on the downhills. After all, there is a five mile an hour speed limit on this one. Pay attention to the signs and road symbols. Also, beware of bicycles and the bike lane. We share the road with each other. On city roads, you're supposed to walk in the same direction as traffic, but if you're running, you go against traffic. On this one-way road, when there are a lot of vehicles, I mostly like to run on the upwind side of the road, or at least up breeze, to help me avoid any exhaust fumes. If you plan to cross to the other side, at least look behind you first to see if anyone is traveling faster than you are on a bike or in a car. Share. Adayota. We have already shared the road with all kinds of people and vehicles. As long as we're sharing, let me share a little bit about myself. My fastest mile time was when I was a sophomore in high school. I ran a 424 mile, and I felt like I was going to die, literally. That's about when I changed to racing the half mile. Like I said before, I've slowed down over the years. Maybe you can relate. Another interesting fact is that I grew up being known by my stepfather's last name, even though I never changed my birth name from my father who was born in Canada. The Bickerdike family has an interesting heritage. My great grand uncle was the politician Robert Bickerdike. I will share more bits of information about myself as we keep running on my favorite trails. Sand, no ya. I suppose if anyone works in a business that uses sand, they'd really have to know ya business. Camera. Didakli los doti. Yes, in case you are wondering, I ran the entire way holding the camera. I do it all for you.
desert. Inake. This is the Sonoran Desert Overlook. Just before the first mile marker, there is a vehicle pullout where you can get a great view. The camera does not capture the awe that you can experience in person, however. The mile markers are painted on the right side of the road. The GPS map shows the most recent mile that we ran. Here's a runner's high tip. Increase your anandamides. The chemical now thought to cause the runner's high. See my logo. It is an endocannabinoid, a naturally synthesized version of THC. I know that I have a rare and unusual name. The history of my surname goes back to the de Bicker family in the 11th century. Robert de Bicker inherited land in Newcastle, England in 1260. His son's wife inherited joining lands, and Robert was granted it all in 1299. This included part of Hadrian's Wall, also called a dyke. So he became Robert Bickerdyke. And that is the history of my unusual name. Another runner's high tip. On average, you have more endocannabinoids in the morning. Running in the morning increases your opportunities. Here is the Cactus Forest Overlook, where you can enjoy views of the Santa Catalina Mountains. If you need to stop and rest for a minute or two, there are rocks you can sit down on. Sitting down is the easy part, but getting back up? That might be more challenging. These rocks are very low to the ground.
Here's another runner's high tip. Run around 75 to 85 percent effort. That's where you're not out of breath and you're still able to speak short sentences. I moved over to the other side of the road as a courtesy to this guy taking a photo. I kept the camera facing forward when I checked behind me in case you were wondering. I like to practice what I preach. I like to film close to the vegetation so you can get a better effect, but it's nothing like being here in person. If you want to have a picnic, take this dirt road to get to the Mica View picnic area. It is just over half of a mile distance to get there. Here's another runner's high tip. Get eight hours of sleep every night. To the left we have the Desert Ecology Trail. It's ADA accessible. It's a short paved path, just over a quarter mile, and it has a lot of information. Here's another runner's high tip. Run with family and friends. It helps to trigger all the feel-good chemicals from your brain. Trail Usti Ganana
right after the three mile mark, we're gonna see some hills. If you don't wanna do a big hill, good time to turn back is now. Another runner's high tip, enjoy nature and the outdoors. Another runner's high tip, practice thankfulness.
I used to do repeats up this hill. These days, going up this hill once is enough for me. I tried jogging in the gutter, but it is too uneven to run on safely. So stick with the level ground. I was just trying to give you a better view. Riparian Overlook Wado. Thank you for watching. Up next, part two of Saguaro National Park Loop.